For years, Europe enjoyed selling tens of billions of euros worth of cars to China without a hitch. However, as soon as Chinese EVs began gaining a competitive presence in Europe, the EU resorted to protectionist measures, hiking tariffs on EVs imported from China between 17.4 to 38.1 percent. This move not only harms Sino-European economic cooperation and the stability of the global automotive supply chain, but also ultimately damages Europe's own interests. According to JTO Dynamics, the average price of an EV in China was 67,000 euros in 2015, and has come down to 32,000 euros, a 50 percent reduction in price over the last seven years. Conversely, EV prices in the U.S. and Europe have increased by 12.5 percent and 17 percent, respectively, over the same period. The EU has set an ambitious target of phasing out new gasoline and diesel vehicles by 2035 to cope with climate change. But the trouble is, European EVs are too expensive to generate enough mass market sales. High-quality, affordable Chinese EVs are exactly what the EU needs. But the new protectionist approach raises serious doubts about the EU's future in effectively fighting climate change. The move has faced strong criticism from within Europe, including industry leaders like BMW's Oliver Zipser and Mercedes-Benz's Ola Kalanias. Despite global trade challenges, China-EU trade reached 783 billion U.S. dollars in 2023, and both European and Chinese businesses showed strong interest in mutual investment. The EU's protectionist move would hamper free and open trade and risk retaliatory trade tariffs from China. The European Commission has acknowledged that there is still room for negotiation, stating should discussions with Chinese authorities not lead to an effective solution, these provisional countervailing duties will be introduced. This highlights the possibility of resolving issues through dialogue rather than confrontation, which is urgently needed not only for China and the EU but also for global trade. By addressing trade friction through negotiations and rule setting, both sides can create a more open and cooperative global economy, ultimately benefiting both Europe and China.